These are my essential must-dos when setting up a brand new MacBook Pro. This is the 14 inch M1 Pro base model. And we're gonna be doing more tests on this. So if you got any requests, hit the comment section down below. This is your first MacBook Pro. These tips will help you. So let's get into it. This has Touch ID. Another cool thing to do when you have Touch ID is add multiple fingerprints. This is just a little tip that a lot of people may not think about, but sometimes a certain finger or a certain hand might be occupied. Now, the number one thing that I always do on every single MacBook Pro, I gotta show you guys. Matter of fact, ooh, I almost forgot. Let me uh, record my screen. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to trackpad. So you're gonna go into your system preferences, you're gonna go to trackpad and this right here, tap to click. Tap to click is by far one of the best things you can do with your trackpad because instead of having to actually physically press it and get that little click, all I have to do is tap. So now I'm just tapping lightly, it's so easy. Now another tip for those who may not know, dark mode is clutch, you guys. So if you don't have dark mode activated, it's gonna ask you in the beginning. Dark mode is good in the sense of, it's good for your eyes, but it's also good on your battery. Dark mode is everything. I'm all about the dark mode. So that's something that's essential that you guys should always turn on if you like it, you know what I mean? Or you could do like the one that goes from daytime to dark, but I like dark mode, dark mode everything. Now another thing around the trackpad, that's a cool little uh, tip that I just recently found out. It's under accessibility, pointer control, and then you gotta go into trackpad options. And then if you enable dragging, and then you can do the three finger drag. Just three fingers to drag is so much easier and so much quicker to do than trying to like click and hold it and, and all that stuff. Like with the one finger, sometimes that might not be easy. Hmm. The triple finger drag <laughs> is actually pretty dope. I like this. Okay, so another thing that you might wanna do, which I'm gonna do going forward that I didn't do in the previous models of MacBook Pros, that's disabling notifications. Since they've switched over to this new Mac OS where you get all of your notifications and things like that, that could be a little like overwhelming. Like it's already bad enough on our smartphones I'm being notified all the time, which I keep my notifications to a minimum and I hide a lot of them. So I should do the same on my computer. So there's certain notifications that are consistent. Think about which notifications are essential to you and which ones you can actually like disable and just have peace of mind. Now another thing that you guys are gonna wanna do that I highly recommend is Time Machine Backup. I recently, when I switched from my M1 Mac Mini to my uh, M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch, I used the Time Machine Backup and it was literally like I just took my computer from the M1 Mac Mini and put it directly onto my M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch, just clutch. So you have to plug in an external hard drive and literally when you usually plug in an external hard drive, it'll ask you, do you wanna use this as a time machine backup? Or you can like partition a portion of a hard drive. If you have like a large hard drive, say you got a one terabyte internal on your MacBook Pro, we'll set one terabyte aside set it up with the time machine and it's always running and always backing it up. The time machine is dope because it does it like time after time, over time. So it's always consistent and it's the perfect backup solution, especially if you end up switching machines in the Apple ecosystem, it's ah. Okay, so another great essential thing that you wanna do in the beginning is pick your background, like your desktop and wallpapers. As you can see right now, I got the light still, but I can switch it to dark. This one is actually the one that it came with. And this is the dark mode version, or you could go with the light mode version. I don't always want the dark mode backgrounds, but honestly, like with this notch, let's just keep it a buck. <laughs> Putting a black background or something with a really dark, you know, essence to it is going to benefit you. Although the notch does disappear when you get into certain apps and you go full screen and things like that. Inevitably, I don't want to look at it on my home page. So uh, let's just say, I wanted to go solid color. Let me see. How do you go to, here we go. Solid color and I just pull up black. Boom. No more notch. Ha! Watch this. Uh, 4K wall, wait, paper, dark, right? And then I'll find something dark. Okay, so just for the sake of this video and for me doing something quick, I'm gonna grab this image right here. Save image to downloads. It's right here. I'm gonna drag this from downloads into here because the thing is you can add folders right here. So. There's the pictures folder, which I'll show you guys. The reason I couldn't find my pictures folder because it's not automatically in your finder. That's gonna be a tip, an essential tip, but I'll do that next. I don't wanna get off a task. So we go here, desktop, and then I choose wallpaper, and then I choose this folder. Boom, now I have this. Notch is gone, and I still have something decent or nice to look at. Another great tip on Mac OS, typically to get the preferences, the shortcut is command comma. Boom, we're in the preferences. You wanna see your hard disk on your desktop? Tap right there. Now Macintosh HD is right there, easy to find. Let's click on sidebar. Now this is where 
I like to enable movies, music, pictures, or so. Now, here, I'm able to find the pictures folder a lot quicker. This sidebar is another great thing that I utilize a lot. Let me show you how. Okay, we made this folder on the desktop. Let's just say that this wallpaper folder was like tucked away somewhere deep in a bunch of folders, but you want to find it easily. Drag it, tuck it right here. Now it's in the sidebar. Every time I need it, I just tap right there. Love it. Another thing right here in these essentials you can always clean up your like view options so like sort by i can always have it sort by kind i like to keep things organized and like kind of in the grid on that note jump into the desktop right here let's go to show view options it's always good i like to sort and then i also like to organize i like to make my icon smaller and i'll pull the text as small as i can i did that here's another thing doc menu bar i like the decrease the size of the dock. I don't like the dock being all massive. See, look at that, I'm getting that illusion. Well, it's not really an illusion, but I'm getting more of my screen back. Another cool thing I've gotten into with the dock is moving it. Automatically hide and show the dock. I like that as well, because that makes it just feel like you have all your real estate, and then when you need it, you just scroll down and it pops up. But here's another thing I'm playing with. I'm gonna do this new this time, so I just right-clicked on that line on the dock, I'm gonna move it to the right side. This is gonna be new for me, but tucking it off to the right. Playing with something new this time, you know what I mean? New MacBooks, new me, right? No, not, not really. Oh, another cool thing with backgrounds and wallpapers is you can actually do them for Safari now. So let me get over here, let's pull out Safari. Uh, I think, right here. Let's see, choose background. So you just right click, you choose background, right? The chroma blue, oh, this is kinda cool. The Monterey background, oh, I like that. Ooh, that's nice. So this is cool, having a background on Safari, that's new, that's dope, I like it. Okay, so another great tip, if you use iCloud or if you have an Apple ID, turning off desktop and document folders, that puts your desktop and document folders in the cloud. I don't want that stuff in the cloud. I just want it on my computer where it's uh, intended to be or usually would be, you know what I'm saying? So that's just a cool tip. Oh, this is another thing that's super clutch. All right, let me do take a couple of screen grabs, right? If you wanna know the, uh, the shortcut is Command Shift 3 to just take a picture. And if you wanna select the area, Command Shift 4, and then you drag it around the area. Hey, let's see if the three finger drag works with that. I'm just curious. Three finger drag, oh it does, that's dope. But that was harder to drag it. You see all of these screenshots right here stacked up. If I kept taking a ton of screenshots, which I do, they're just gonna build up all of these pictures on my desktop and it's just gonna get messy. Right click, use stacks. Now they all get compressed. And anytime I wanna see my screenshots, I just tap there to expand. Keep your desktop organized. Keep it minimal. It's good for your brain. Oh, another cool one that I just found out recently, the Finder. There's some cool things in here in the view where you can do, you can show the path bar and even showing, I believe the status bar shows you how much gigabytes you have available. So, so we have 463 gigabytes available. It's always good to keep track of your hard drive, especially when you go with these smaller hard drive sizes on these base models. I can see where this file is at all times, like the pathway to get there, as well as I see how much hard drive space I have left. I'll come out with a part two. Y'all smash that like button. Uh, if y'all got any dope tips that you use that I didn't mention, put them down there. And then when I make the uh, second video, you guys will be a part of that as well. Well, 